vision. Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. And welcome back to the D-List favorite Decemberween tradition, talking about Homestar Runner. <laughs> In years past, I've listed my favorite spee mails and my favorite holiday shorts, and this year I thought I'd talk about my five favorite puppet shorts, because I love those Homestar puppets. Hey guys, wanna play some games? Uh, not with you, Creepazoid. Number five, Puppet Time. Homestar returns a tape to Strong Bad, but he's not there because they hadn't built a Strong Bad puppet yet, so Homestar decides to ransack the empty house. Strong Bad, I'm borrowing this milk for an undisclosed period of time. Strong Bad, I'm borrowing this squeegee type deal. Taking the guitar. A lot of the puppet stuff on the site takes full advantage of the puppet medium by doing material that wouldn't really work with flash animation, but this short is based more on the pre-established characters and their dynamics, so it still could technically work as a tune. There's no real unique puppety gimmick about it, but it does benefit from live action in subtle ways. The frantic motions of the Homestar Puppet project a sense of urgency not often found in his animated motions. And the fact that in ransacking the place, he's stealing actual real-life physical objects you might have in your own house just sells the gag a little bit further. I was just, um, doing nothing with nothing that belongs to Strongbad. Character? Character? You ain't got no character, Whitey! I'm out of here! Number four. To promote the dangerous theme chapter of Telltale Strong Bad Game, the Brothers Chaps made Dangeresque Puppet Squad. And as someone who spent much of his childhood on terrible attempts to make terrible movies, I'm a sucker for all things Dangeresque. The running gag in Dangeresque material is how blatantly cheap Strong Bad's homemade production is, especially with its obvious stunt doubles, and this takes that notion one level more meta by reveling in how cheap the puppet production is, with its obvious puppet doubles. I just drank that. Looks like we're all gonna have to jump. Looks like we finally caught the guy responsible for one time stealing my curly fries. Or did you? I need those downloads on my desk by five. Going on my seventh coffee run. You want anything? Number three. One underrated recurring puppet segment is the BizCast Fry series, showing Strong Bad's interactions with Homestar at the office where they both work whenever their whole indeterminate age thing skews more grown up. Wonderman, you quack me up. Quack. Me. Up. That's why you're my D-O-G-E. Your doge? What are you talking about? Or at least towards a kid's perception of what it's like to be a grown up. Those naive children thinking job security exists. We've seen The Office before in cartoons and emails, and again, these sketches probably could have worked as cartoons, but whatever format they decided to put these in, they are quite funny. My favorite installment was the second one, where Strong Bad's apparently brilliant plan of covering the computer with post-its is interrupted by an amazingly hungover home star. Man, I don't even want to remember what went on last night. Apparently you didn't want to remember to take a shower either! And it all leads to an unprepared Strong Bad meeting with the perfect evil faceless overlords of their very vague organization. So, let me tell you about this post-it note. Listen tightly. This thing's gonna save the company millions! What about the earnings? Seriously, what jobs do real grown-ups have? This the kind of man we hire these days? He's a total liability! Yeah, liability. The store. Who are you? Well, I am the exact same. Number two. Now, the biggest advantage of controlling a physical character live, rather than animating one over time, is the ability to interact with guests. And no puppet segment is more enduring or endearing than the Little Girl series, where the characters interact with the brother's chap's niece. I'm gonna kick you! What? <laughs> oh, you wanna kick me? <laughs> That's not allowed either. Be careful with him. That's my only de cheat that I have. That doesn't count as being careful. That sounds like funny. It sounds like funny, but it's not. They're all funny and adorable, 
And yet, surprisingly, my favorite one is the one that sounds like it would be the most awful. Hey, boogity, I'll tear your back! You, Marshy. The personification of nightmare fuel. Putting this abomination next to a small child should be the most traumatizing thing one could imagine, but what makes it work is Marshy is powerless over the little girl. Little girl's cuteness actually manages to overpower Marshy's previously unbeatable creepiness. Or indeed, any creepiness. Do you know the secret ingredient for my potion? What is it? Dry ice. I think that just killed the magic! And it's not just innocent naivety at work. Little girl knows darn well that she's putting Marshy in his place. Not, not. Who's there? Vampire. Vampire who? Vampires are dumb. Can we got me have to do this? But she's sympathetic. She doesn't kick him when he's down. Pucky marshmallows aren't real, but you, you're you real to me. And most importantly, they collaborate on the perfect pitch for Marshy's product. Hey, little girl, what's your favorite thing about Fluffy Puff Malloween? They're definitely like... Water. Yeah, our marshmallows are just like water. Fluffy Puff Malloween, why ever drink again? Email. Is it like a email pie of some kind, or maybe barf bags, all that good stuff? And my number one favorite Homestar puppet short. Yes, improvising with a young relative is cute, but what about improvising with a musical guest star? The Puppet Jam series featured Homestar jamming with They Might Be Giants, as the Johns would lay down some music and Matt Chapman would move his hand while ad-libbing the sort of nonsense that only Homestar could say. And needless to say, with this pedigree coming together, the results were magical. And for my money, there's only one pick for the catchiest, funniest, and most haunting of all these songs. Tropical laser beams, laser beams of love, tropical lima beams, laser beams in Fiji. Maybe Tijuana, even though that's not really tropic. Laser beams in Tahiti. Tropical! On the sunset! And there you have it, my favorite Homestar puppet shorts. And I know Homestar updates of any variety are sporadic at best these days, but I hope we get another visit from the felt versions of our favorite Free Country USA friends soon. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off. I'm always crying, tropical laser beam. When you're away, it's like a void. I try to avoid it every time you're away. I put my lasers on stun. Because I gotta stun you. Just to get my point through, laser beams, laser beams.